now we'll come to another kind of relationship between classes association relationship between classes what are the other relationships that we have learned inheritance that is is a relationship realization realization is also an is a relationship only thing is here we are implementing the interface there we are extending the class when you say two classes are having this relationship association when they are totally independent of each other their life cycle or lifetime is independent of each other so if you delete one object the another object is not impacted if you delete one object another object is not impacted a very good example for this is uh, teacher and student so a professor is an object a student is also an object so if a professor leaves the organization you delete the professor object you're not going to delete the student object there is no dependency like that if a student leaves the university will you delete a professor object so that is what uh, you know you when you say lifetime no life cycle is independent that to, that is what is the meaning when you delete an object that will not impact the another object but they are somehow related what do you mean by this relationship somewhere i am using the methods or functionality of one object inside another object then you say that is association you got this as a teacher i can view your profile i can view the profile of any student in this university but i am not any way related to that student so teacher object can view profile of a student object so profile data is for a student object right so i am somewhere interacting with the student object and then viewing the data but my, the lifetime of my object and that object is totally independent inside the system so can we go and implement code for this you create a professor object you create a student object with all the profile data say two or three fields a professor should be able to view the students uh, data provided he gives the registration number of that student we we'll just take one student here because we cannot go and create a list of student object it is very complicated so you take one student object one professor object professor should view the profile information of the student provided the registration number that he gives in as input matches that particular student so you will have two objects here and the relationship between these two objects is association in software engineering you would have learned this association between various classes but we'll implement it and we'll learn it now let me create this class student i told you right two classes will be there one is student and one is professor let's create a class student let's have some variables for the student name registration number and the phone number something like that and we can have a method for the student a public method okay we have a public method for the student that is get info what this method is going to do is it's going to return name plus registration number plus phone so it's going to return a string so i'm going to have the return type to be string here and then we'll have a parameterized constructor for our student class how can you easily create a parameterized constructor go to source generate constructor using fields select all the fields click generate it's there for you so you have created a parameterized constructor you are having a method that will return the information initialize in your class instance variable okay so now what we'll do is we'll have a class professor to right there is a professor class can we go and create a class professor <coughs> class professor <coughs> what professor does is it just views the profile of a student so you will have this method public method for the professor view profile <coughs> when a professor wants to view profile it will be professor dot view profile so what we are going to do is we are going to have a sysout message we can have a scanner class for him we are going to get some input from him right scanner input is equal to new scanner and then system dot in okay and then we'll have a sysout message that says enter 
the ID of the student. So he's going to enter the registration number of the student. And then we'll use a string to store the registration number, input reg number is equal to input dot next line, right? So we'll store that here. Once when this is done, we should somehow compare that with the student's registration number. So that is an object, S1 dot registration number. So view profile should get an object of type student. Say student S. So I am when I am in, whenever I am starting off with view profile, I also pass this object of type student. And then what I'm going to <coughs> check here is if input reg number dot equals because it's a string, right? So we have to use dot equals s dot reg number. If this reg number equals that reg number, what we are going to do is we are going to do, we are going to just put a sysout message here. Not a message, we are just going to print all the data for the student. We can just call s dot get info within my display function. So our class professor view profile method is done. Our students, uh, you know, data is also done. So for a professor to view the student data, first the student object should be created. Only when you are in the system, I can view your profile. So first you should get admitted, right? So we'll create a student object. So will you create a student object here? We'll say student. So one student is getting created in my system. So whenever a student gets created, I should pass his name, say Ram is the student, registration number is 12 BCE and his phone number is 98, some rapid phone number we'll have here, random phone number. Now students are there in my system, a student is there in my system. A professor object should also be created. What is, how do you create a professor object? So you call professor, say professor Satish is here view professor and then what Satish is going to do is Satish dot view profile and what should I pass here I should pass the student object so what is the student object s1 now if I go and execute this so who is the student ram 12 bce so registration number is 12 bce right say now the professor is going to view the data let's go and save this run this one Let's get 12 BC. So it's capital letters. Enter the registration number. So I'm getting viewing the data of the student. So what you're seeing here is please take a look at the board. You're creating this object separately. This object separately. You can <coughs> these two objects are totally independent. They are not dependent on each other with respect to lifetime. But say if I delete the professor object, will the student object be deleted? No, because student object is independent, right? These two objects are on separately on the heap. So if I delete a student object, the professor object will not be deleted. These are the two. So if I delete a professor, a student will not be deleted. But there is a relationship. I should pass the student object to be one of the arguments of the functions in the professor object. The professor object is somewhere using the method of the student object. Which method it's using? It is using s1 dot return that is get info. So inside the professor object, you can see which method is being called from the student object. So inside view profile. You can see I am calling s dot get info. Somewhere from one of the objects, I am also calling the methods for another object, but the lifetime for these two objects are totally independent. So this is called association relationship in UML. <coughs> and you have to analyze your problem statement deeply before specifying a relationship. There can be one to one relationship in association, one to many, many to one. If a department has many students, so you're going to create a list of objects mapped to a department. 
but you have to check whether the lifetime of these two objects are totally independent. 